Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 12 days to go to your GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to be focusing on the topic of exact trig values. So we've looked at trigonometry, 3D trigonometry, the sine rule, the cosine rule, even using a half A, B, sine C to find the area of a triangle. But it can be quite useful to know your exact trig values because those questions can be asked in a non-calculator paper and it might be useful to know your exact trig values for them. So in terms of exact trig values, there's a co bounds revision card on it. So that'd be quite a useful one to learn off by heart or to get someone to quiz you on it and to say, what's the sine of 30 degrees? And then you can say a half. Or what's the cos of 45 degrees? And you can say root 2 over 2. Or you can write them on your windows using the window pen. So when you're daydreaming, you can just look out the window and see the exact trig values, and then you'll know them off by heart. <laughs> and in this video, we're going to focus on the exact trig values. There's going to be some questions for you to try as well. So remember to press pause and try those questions. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at exact trig values. Now, before we move on to exact trig values, I thought we'd just warm up by doing a few trigonometry questions today. So here's two trigonometry questions. We've got a right angle triangle, and I want you to find the length of this side. And here we've got another right angle triangle, and can you find the size of this angle? So press pause now and work out the length of this side, and then work out the size of this angle. Okay, let's start with this question. So here we've got a right angle triangle and we want to find the length of this side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label the side. So here's the angle, so the side opposite it will be called the opposite. Here we've got the right angle, so the side opposite it, the longest side of the right angle triangle is the hypotenuse, and the other side adjacent to the angle is called the adjacent. So we've labeled the sides, now let's jot down our trigonometric ratios. Okay, so I've written down the trig ratio, so the tan of the angle is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent, the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, and the cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Or some people remember, Socator or two old angels skipped over heaven carrying a harp. So if we have a look at our triangle that we were given, we've got the sides labeled, the opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. Now we're trying to find the adjacent, so we're obviously going to be using that in this question. We've been given the 10 centimeters for the hypotenuse, but the opposite we're not trying to find and we're not going to use. So we can cross off the opposite and we can cross off any trigonometric ratio that uses the opposite. So we're not going to be using tan and we're not going to be using sine. In this question, we're going to be using the cos. So let's write that down. The cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So let's substitute in our values. So the cos of the angle, well, the angle is 70 degrees. So the cos of 70 degrees is equal to the adjacent. So in this question, the adjacent is x, so x divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10. Now we want to find x, so we don't want this to divide by 10 here, so let's multiply both sides by 10. So let's multiply the left hand side by 10 and the right hand side by 10. So it will give us on the left hand side the cos of 70 degrees, close brackets, multiplied by 10, is equal to x. And if we just work out the cos of 70, close brackets, multiplied by 10, that's going to be the size of x, the length of that side. So let's do that. So x is equal to 3.42 centimeters to two decimal places, to two decimal places. And that's it. So we find the length of that side. And if you got that, well done. Okay, so we've now got our over triangle and we want to find the size of this angle x. So let's label our sides. So opposite the right angle will be the hypotenuse. Opposite the angle we're trying to find will be the opposite, and the other side will be the adjacent. So we've labeled our sides, now let's jot down our trig ratios. Okay, so I've written down our trig ratios. The tan of the angle is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. The sine of the angle is equal to the opposite divided by hypotenuse. And the cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Or socator, or two old angels skipped over heaven carrying a harp. So we've jotted down our trig ratios. Now let's have a look at our triangle. We've labeled the sides. In this question, we're going to be using the opposite. We're going to be using the adjacent. So we're not using or trying to find the hypotenuse. So we can cross it off. And we can cross off any trig ratio that uses the hypotenuse. So we're not going to be using sine, we're not going to be using cos, so in this question we're going to be using tan. So the tan of the angle is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. So let's substitute in our values. So we've got the tan of the angle, so the tan of the angle, tan x. So we've got the tan of the angle is equal to the opposite, so in this case the opposite is 8 centimeters, so that's 8 divided by the adjacent, which is 6. So that means the tan of this angle is equal to 8 sixths. Now we want to find the size of this angle, this angle obviously is an 8 sixths of a degree, we want to find what x is, so we need to get rid of the tan, so we need to do the inverse tan. So that means the x or angle will be equal to the inverse tan, the inverse tan of 8 sixths. So we can just get our calculator and press shift and tan press our fraction button, type in 8 sixths and press equals, and that gives us that x is equal to 53.1301 and so on degrees. And let's just run that to two decimal places, that means that x is equal to 53.13 degrees to two decimal places. And that's it, and if you got that, well done. So we've just had a look at two questions, and for both of those questions, you will have had to use your calculator. Now, what if trigonometry comes up on a non-calculator paper? So it can be useful to know some exact trig values. And these are some exact trig values. So you get the sine of 0 degrees is equal to 0. The sine of 30 degrees is equal to a half, or 0.5. The sine of 45 degrees is equal to root 2 divided by 2. 
The sine of 60 degrees is equal to root 3 over 2, and the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. So it's important you know those exact trig values, the sine of 0 degrees, the sine of 30 degrees, the sine of 45 degrees, the sine of 60 degrees, and then the sine of 90 degrees. And you can check them on your calculator. If you check them on your calculator, you'll get these answers. Next, cos. So if we do the cos of 0 degrees, that's equal to 1. The cos of 30 degrees is equal to root 3 over 2. The cos of 45 degrees is equal to root 2 over 2. The cos of 60 degrees, that's also equal to a half. So the sine of 30 degrees and the cos of 60 degrees are both equal to a half, and they're quite useful to know. And the cos of 90 degrees is equal to 0. And in terms of tan, the tan of 0 degrees is equal to 0. The tan of 30 degrees is equal to root 3 over 3. The tan of 45 degrees is equal to 1. And the tan of 60 degrees is equal to root 3. And the tan of 90 degrees is undefined. There's no answer for that. So these are some of your exact trig values. And they're quite useful to know because you might be given a question such as write down the value of the tan of 45 degrees. And without a calculator, then you're just going to have to know that the tan of 45 degrees is equal to 1. Or it might be you're doing a trigonometry question on a non-calculator paper and you get to the point where you're doing something multiplied by the sine of 30 degrees and then you're going to need to know that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to half or again you might be doing a non-calculator paper and you get that the cos of an angle is equal to a half and then if for instance you had the cos of an angle was equal to a half you're going to need to know what angle when you do the cos of it you get a half and then the cos of 60 degrees is equal to a half so that means that the inverse cos of a half will be equal to 60 degrees. And again, if these are non-calculator questions, you're going to need to know these exact trig values so that you can work it out without using your calculator. OK, let's have a look at some questions now for you to try. So here are some questions for you. Can you write down the value of the sine of 30 degrees, the tan of 45 degrees, and the cos of 30 degrees? And remember, these are non-calculator questions, so do this without your calculator, please. OK, so the sine of 30 degrees, that's quite nice. The sine of 30 degrees is equal to half. The tan of 45 degrees, well, that's equal to 1. And the cos of 30 degrees is equal to root 3 over 2. And that's it. And if you got those, well done. OK, let's have a look at another question. OK, so this time we've been given a trigonometry question. This is a non-calculator question, so put your calculator down and work out the size of this angle x. OK, so the first thing you would do is you would label your side. So here's the right angle. So this side is the hypotenuse. The side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. If this is the angle, then the side opposite it will be the opposite. And that means the other side, this side, is the adjacent. So if we labeled our sides, let's jot down our trig ratios. OK, so just jotted down the trig ratios. Now let's have a look at our triangle. We've labeled the sides. Now if we have a look at this question, we're going to be using the adjacent. We're going to be using the hypotenuse, but we're not using or trying to find the opposite. So we can cross that off. And we can cross off any trig ratio that uses the opposite. So we're not using tan and we're not using sine. So we're going to be using cos in this question. So let's write that down. The cos of the angle, cos x, is equal to the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So let's substitute in our values. The cos of the angle, so the cos of x, is equal to the adjacent. So that's 8 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 16. And 8 over 16 is a half, so we get the cos of the angle is equal to a half. So we've got the cos of the angle is equal to a half. Now we want to find the size of this angle. Now remember, it's a right angle triangle, so this angle must be acute. So we want to figure out what angle, whenever you do the cos of it, do you get a half? Well, think back to our exact trig values. The cos of 60 degrees is equal to a half. So that means that the angle must be 60 degrees. So that means the angle must be 60 degrees. So that means that x is equal to the inverse cos of a half and the inverse cos of a half is equal to 60 degrees so x is equal to 60 degrees and that's it so that angle is 60 degrees because the cos of 60 degrees is equal to a half and that's it okay let's have a look at another question okay let's have a look at another question this is a non-calculator question so put your calculator down and work out the length of that side x so press pause and work out the length of this side OK, so let's label our sides. So here's our angle. So the side opposite it will be the opposite. Here's our right angle. So the side opposite it will be the hypotenuse. And that means the other side must be the adjacent. Let's jot down our trig ratios. OK, so we've got the tan of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. The sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And the cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Or Sokatoa, or two old angels skipped over heaven carrying a harp. Now, if we have a look at our question, we've labeled our sides. We're trying to find the opposite, so we're using the opposite. We've been given the hypotenuse, we're using that. But we're not trying to find and we're not using the adjacent, so we can cross that off. And we can cross off any trig ratio that uses the adjacent. So let's cross that off, and let's cross that off off and in this question we're going to be using the sine. The sine of the angle is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. So let's substitute in our values. The sine of the angle, so that's 30 degrees, the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite which is x divided by the hypotenuse which is 9. So that's going to be x the opposite divided by the hypotenuse which is 9. Now we want to find out what x is so we don't want this to divide by 9 here so we're going to multiply by 9 and multiply by 9. On the left hand side we'll have the sine of 30 degrees 
and then close brackets, multiply by 9 will be equal to x because we multiply by 9 to get rid of the divide by 9, so we're just left with x. Okay, now at this point, normally what I would do is I'd pick up my calculator and I'd work, type this in and work it out. Uh, but this is an on calculator question, so we're going to have to work this out without a calculator. So the sine of 30 degrees. Well, the sine of 30 degrees is equal to half. So that's equal to half. So that's a half or 0 0.5, whichever way you want to write it, half or 0 0.5, multiplied by 9. And that's equal to x. Now 0 0.5 times 9 will be equal to 4.5. So that means that 4.5 is equal to x. So it means that x the length of this side is 4.5 centimeters. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. So we were able to do that trigonometry question without using a calculator because we knew our exact trig values. And that's it. So here are the exact trig values. They're really useful to know. Feel free to press pause and to write these with your window pens on your windows or if you've got a cheat sheet, jot them down in your cheat sheet. Uh, and that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we're going through exact trig values. I really hope you found it useful. Now, one thing I would say with 12 days to go is, remember you've got people around you that might be there to support you. So you might have a brother or sister who's maybe done their GCSE maths already, and they might be really good at maths and might be able to help you out with a particular topic. You might have a parent or guardian that might be there to help you. That, for instance, if you want some extra help on a particular topic, they might be able to help you out with it. Or it might be just you're nervous about this or you're struggling with that. And even just turning to them and asking them for some help or support might be quite useful. So remember there's people around you, even your teachers and your head of year and so on. So the next time you're in school, go to your teachers or your head of year and ask them for a bit of help on, you know, a bit of help with your maths or even just you need a bit of extra help in terms of a bit of a pep talk in terms of you can do this. You know, you've got people around you that can help you. So, you know, turn to them and they'll, they'll be more than happy to help you out. But I just want to say with 12 days ago, you're doing really well for your GCSE maths study. You're doing really well for your revision. Keep it up. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Cheers. Bye.